episode 3 of the final season. In case you haven't seen part 1 of this episode, I highly suggest you to do so and then come back and watch this video. Back to the outline, it says that archers continue to rain down arrows on the advancing army of the dead on Davos' orders. The army of the dead tries to breach the gates and the walls of Interfell, but without success. The undead giants approach the gates of Interfell. Senor Clegane uses a huge ballista and manages to kill one giant. The hound kills a giant using a huge ballista, it says, but where is this huge ballista coming from, one would wonder. It's most likely coming from Castle Black. Back in Season 4, during the battle for Castle Black, we've actually seen a giant being killed by a huge ballista bolt shot from atop the wall. With the mention of the Night's Watch participating in this battle, it's definitely not out of the realm of possibilities that they brought this huge ballista with them from the wall to Winterfell to help Winterfell's defenses. However, it seems like the Hound and the huge ballista will not be enough to stop the army of the dead from breaching the gates of Winterfell. It says that the remaining two giants managed to breach the gates of Winterfell. Jon Snow gives an impassioned speech, encouraging everyone to fight until their last breath. Breath. His speech rallies everyone and John leads the charge against the Horde of Whites who have breached the gates, causing an intense battle in the courtyard of Winterfell. John is closely followed by his direwolf ghosts, Arya, Jorah, Gendry, Brienne and Podrick. The Unsullied, the Knights of the Vale and the Northerners accompanied with only a few the track if fight the Night King's army. Bran Stark works into the Undead Giants. Everyone fights except for Sansa, Bran, Sam, Lil Sam and Gilly who are in the crypts of Winterfell. Jon Snow fights a White Walker, so do Arya and Brienne. Arya is the first one to kill a White Walker with a Valyrian steel dagger through a White Walker's neck. Jon Snow also manages to kill a White Walker after a long duel, Brienne struggles. Tormund dies by saving Brienne, Podrick dies by saving Tyrion. Beric the Lord Seth, Lord Servin and Lord Royce die as well. The Hound picks up Beric's flaming sword and starts killing Whites. Both sides suffer huge casualties, but there's more army of the dead at Winterfell than there is the living. It's night and battle still rages. Winterfell is on fire caused by all the fire arrows the living used to kill the Whites. At this point most of the Northerners and the Knights of the Vale are dead. The Unsullied are what keeps the battle going. I gotta stop right there to say that the battle being fought in the night, Winterfell being on fire and the Unsullied being the lonely survivors that are defending Winterfell has been confirmed by a bunch of leaked photos. In this particular leaked photo we can see the Unsullied the Dragonglass tipped spears fighting a horde of whites in Winterfell. It's also very important to highlight that Bran has seemingly worked into an undead giant, which is a huge hint for the episodes to come. We've never seen Bran working into anyone from the Night King's army thus far, but now that he has it leaves a huge possibility of Bran working into the Night King's undead dragon as well at some point of the season. After all, the Three-Eyed Raven did tell Bran that he will not walk again, but he will fly. Back to the outline, it continues with Ghost saves Jon multiple times, Sarah saves Gendry. We see a bird's eye shot of a devastating battle inside Winterfell. Battle seems to be lost. Jon orders Arya to go to the crypts to get her sister, brother and others and flee before it's too late. Arya refuses to leave Jon and sends a few guards instead. The living side at Winterfell has used all the forces they had in this battle and what's left of them stands no chance to emerge victorious. At this moment, two hooded men enter the gates of Winterfell, outflanking the army of the dead. These two hooded men turn out to be Jaime and Bronn. They are followed by the Lannister Frey Tully army led by Edmure Tully. I gotta stop right there to point out that this twist might not be coming as a huge surprise as it seems to be at first. Jaime being the savior of Winterfell has been hinted by him and Bronn arriving at River Run in the end of episode 2. Why didn't Jaime continue traveling the King's Road that runs straight towards Winterfell while he was at the Crossroads Inn, but instead went on the River Road that runs west into the Riverlands? The answer is because he went to River Run to rally the Lancer forces that were sent to the Riverlands to ensure peace and while he was at it, he probably told Edmure about the danger that his nieces and nephews are facing. Edmure Tully then probably rallied the Riverlands. The Riverlands include the Frey soldiers as well, who now that their lords have been killed have most likely switched their allegiance to Edmure. Anyways, back to the outline. It says that sometime later, Arya's direwolf Nymeria also joins the battle with her pack of wolves. Jon, Jaime and Brienne decide to pick a fight with the remaining White Walkers while the others fight Whites. They know if they are to kill a White Walker, a huge amount of Whites dies along. That's their only chance. With Game of Thrones coming to its end, it only makes sense for direwolves to finally reappear. Ghost sees a lot of action in this episode and Emiria is now here too. John, Jamie and Brienne's decision to pick a fight with the White Walkers is one of the best choices they could have made. As seen in the previous season, if a White Walker dies, the Whites that they raised instantly collapse as well. Outline continues with John kills two White Walkers, Brienne kills one with Arya's help. Jamie is bested by a White Walker who disarms him. Brienne sees it from a distance. She starts running towards Jamie to save him, but there are too many Whites on her way. Jamie is wounded and on his knees. A White Walker raises his sword and prepares to swing a final blow. The scene intensifies, Tyrion watches. Arya stabs a White Walker from behind with a Valyrian steel dagger. The battle turns in their favor and the living eventually emerge victorious. Nymeria and most of her pack perish during the battle. 
The Living has won the battle from Winterfell, but most of their armies are gone. Huge portion of Winterfell has been burned down. At this moment, Euron appears to the Ironborn, the Lannisters and the Golden Company. He's been waiting for the battle between the living and the dead to end. He's there on Cersei's orders to kill what's left of the winning army. We see a shot of the Ironborn and the Lannister led by Euron and the Golden Company led by Harry Strickland. They are marching towards Winterfell with the War Elephants. Jon orders everyone to form a shield wall near the fallen gates of Winterfell. Plan is to meet them on the gates. They start forming a formation. Are you sure about that boy? Jamie asks Gindry, looking on his warhammer. That thing is too heavy, he continues. Bran agrees and says, hey, not quite a useful for a battle, it's exhausting, trust me. Gindry looks on his warhammer and smiles. Jon overhears their conversation and says he's King Robert's son, I think he can handle it. Jamie is stunned, he realizes it's the black-haired son of late Robert Baratheon that's standing beside him. It's the firstborn son of King Robert and his sister. Gindry then says, I'm Robert's bastard son, only Jamie replies with, you're not. This has Gindry confused. He says, that's what the Red Woman told me. That's why the Golden Cloaks were looking for me. Jamie replies with, you're not a bastard. You're the firstborn son of my sister Cersei and King Robert. This information surprises and shocks everyone. Gindry replies in shock with, that can't be. I remember my mother. She had golden hair. Jamie interrupts Gindry and says, exactly. The battle against Euron Greyjoy and the Golden Company starts. While Euron is fighting at Winterfell, Theon takes advantage of a situation and rescues Ciara from the silence. Let me stop right there to say that Euron attacking Winterfell once the battle between the living and the dead ends to kill what's left of the victorious party is coming as a surprise, but at the same time it's also been kind of confirmed by the leaked photos. In this leaked photo that was taken on Winterfell's set, we can see the dead Ironborn that would be Euron's casualties in this battle at Winterfell does seem to be confirming yet another major event in this outline. Jamie realizing Gendry's son of King Robert and his sister Cersei are revealing to him the truth and everyone nearby does link with the first scene of this episode. Let me remind you that this episode started with Bran having multiple visions of past and future events and one has been a vision of Cersei giving birth to a black-haired son. This son seems to be Gendry himself. This turn of events will surely come as a huge surprise to some fans but also as the long-standing theory finally coming true to the others. Anyways, back to the outline. Scene switches back to Winterfell. Jon's strategy to fight Cersei's forces at the gates of Winterfell works at the start of a battle. Many Ironborn die. The Golden Company and the Lannister army then start using the War Elephants and the ladders, breaching and winning the walls. Davos and Tyrion retreat with the archers. Senor Clegane and Jorah get wounded. Jon realizes that they are going to be overrun. He orders his men to lay down their weapons and stop fighting. Jon says, stand down. Everyone stand down. Everyone looks at Jon, some stop fighting, some don't. Arya asks him, what are you doing? Most of us have already died this day. Too many to afford losing more in a fight amongst ourselves if we plan to win this war. Jon approaches Euron and Harry unarmed. He says there is no need to fight. Thousands of people don't need to die. Euron smiles, cuts him off and asks, are you proposing a one-on-one -on -one combat bastard? Jon pauses and says no. Take me as your hostage and take me to your queen. After all, that's what are you fighting for, right? To have me defeated on my knees before Queen Cersei. Everyone is in shock, especially Jaime. Euron replies, not only you. Your dragon bitch and your sister bitch too. Where Queen Cersei and Lady Sansa? Cersei would like to see their heads on a spike too. Sansa overhears it from the crypts of Winterfell. I'm afraid they're not here, says Jon. Harry asks, where then? Daenerys is with her dragons, either fighting or trying to find the Night King and his dragon, Jon answers. And Sansa? asks Harry. Sansa is at the Eyrie, it's safer there, Jon answers. Here Strickland and Euron agree to take Jon, their hostage, as they are aware they wouldn't win a fight without further casualties. In case you haven't seen my previous videos in which I brought you the outlines for episode 1, 2 and the first part of episode 3, Harry Strickland, the one who attacks Winterfell with Euron and speaks with Jon after he's surrounded, is the leader of the Golden Company. A few months after I'd received this outline, Game of Thrones casted the role of Harry Strickland for season 8. What's happening in this part of the outline is that Euron with Cersei's forces and the Golden Company attacks Winterfell after they've been weakened by the Night King's army. What's left of Jon and Danny's armies, with the support of Jaime and Edmure's armies, do give a fight. But Jon decides to end it by surrendering and offering him as a hostage in exchange for a battle to be stopped. Jon realizes that if the fight continues, they're all going to be killed, so he sacrifices himself in order to save everyone else. Has this part of the leaked outline also been confirmed, one may ask? Yes, this major event has been confirmed as well by numerous leaked photos from episode 4. As you can see, Jon Snow will, in episode 4, be escorted through the walls of King's Landing all the way to Queen Cersei Lannister where they will meet and share a couple of words. The outline continues with the next scene show us the Night King in the far south flying Viserion. He's formed a new, larger army just as everyone in Winterfell suspected he would once Bran told them about his vision. The Night King raised a new army of the dead across Westeros by reanimating every soldier that has died throughout the recent wars. The Night King has also attacked Dorne and now has the entire Dorne with him too. 
I gotta stop right there to point out that at the end of season 7 we all expected the Night King to hit Winterfell first. Then we saw leaked photos of Winterfell burning and most of us were certain that the Night King and his dragon were behind it. However, as it turns out, only the Night King's army attacked Winterfell while he's been forming new, stronger and larger army in the far south. Winterfell is being burned down by the living side themselves caused by the fire arrows used to kill whites. Anyways, back to the outline. We are back at Winterfell again, everyone is discussing what to do next. Some say that they need to rescue Jon, others say that Jon would not want a battle to be fought because of him. Most of them agree that they don't have enough men for a battle. Instead, they decide to wait for Daenerys and her dragons to come back and then make a final decision. One thing is certain, they are marching south, either on King's Landing or on the Night King. Everyone starts speaking among themselves. Sans, Arya and Bran, Brienne, Jaime, Gintry and the Hound, Lyanna Mormont and Jorah. Tyrion asks Sam if he's found anything useful from all the books he's read. Sam tells Tyrion about an entry from the World of Ice and Fire book that Gilly showed him. He says it's about a promised hero that will be reborn to save the world from darkness. He says it's a prophecy known as the prince that was promised. Tyrion replies with, yes, yes, the promised hero to save us from the long night. I've heard of him before. I wonder where was this hero today? The conversation catches more people listening it. Sam pauses. Tyrion then asks him to tell him more about that legendary hero. Sam continues with his name was Azor Ahai. He fought the darkness with a red sword. It says that he will be reborn as the prince that was promised. The reborn part has Davos interested. Davos tells them about Jon's death and how he was reborn. Bran then reveals everyone that Jon is a legitimate son of Lyanna and Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, which Sam confirms. The scene ends with Tyrion saying the prince has won today and we've just lost him to Cersei. Only Jaime replies with and we need to get him back. The episode ends with the nearest flying dragon followed closely by Rhaegal. The Night King is flying towards them on Viserion. Whoa, what an ending. It seems that the show confirms that Jon Snow is the prince that was promised. Bran and Sam on the other hand reveal everyone who Jon's true parents are. And it seems that the following episode might see the dance of the dragons with the nearest and dragon accompanied with Rhaegal finally finding the Night King and his undead dragon. There you have it guys, seemingly legit outline of episode 3. And as always